you got a death wish or something. Am I supposed to kill you now? Oh, no, bro. Not me. He has betrayed everyone he's ever known. He's got you involved with the federal government, and he's messed up several business ventures of mine. He has got to go. I have never fully enjoyed the ending of Grand Theft Auto V. That's not to say it's particularly a bad one. Grand Theft Auto V is a game with a massive story with many different elements to consider, from Michael and how he is retired, yet constantly being pulled back to old ways from his past. Then you have Franklin and his own struggle of trying to get out of the ghetto and make a decent to comfortable living for himself. And then we, of course, have Trevor, a maniac that just enjoys setting the world on fire and torments and all of those around him. That's three individual characters, three different personalities, three different sets of proms and ambitions mixed with how their own relationships within each other and everyone else in the game forms together to create one giant cohesive story with many different moving parts. It's a lot to juggle without a doubt. Rockstar wouldn't have the luxury granted with Grand Theft Auto 4 where since we have a single protagonist things can be a little bit more fleshed out and not feel so rushed like Grand Theft Auto 5's ending feels. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion of course I'm sure some people absolutely love the ending of Grand Theft Auto 5 and it was a perfect send-off for them with Devin Weston being kidnapped by Trevor who taunted him the entire drive to the cliff that ended up being his final resting place with this canon ending being bombastic action-packed with a little bit of humor others on the other hand enjoyed finishing off Michael or more likely Trevor since it appeared most people that ended up killing Trevor did so just purely out of disgust and repulsion of his actions and overall character well the argument of multiple protagonists was the way to go and Rockstar did or didn't make the quote-unquote right choice of sacrificing a better more memorable story in exchange for what could be considered an approach more towards gameplay with each character offering different abilities customizable options in terms of tattoos and hairstyles properties to purchase and unique strangers to meet out in the open world I want to for this particular video leave that at the wayside and try to express why I personally was never fully content with this game's wrap-up after seven plus years multiple console generations and an unbelievable amount of playthroughs, I think I finally figured out why this game's ending for me felt too rushed. And it starts with the mission, the wrap up. This mission is very late into the game. As a matter of fact, roughly, there's about six more missions until you see the game's credits begin to roll. It was only a handful of missions prior to the wrap up that Trevor and Michael had a massive falling out with the truth about Michael's fake death and Brad being the one that was actually buried in his what Trevor believed to be hollow grave came to light. The following mission, Trevor deliberately withholds information on Michael's whereabouts to Franklin who then ends up having to contact Lester to aid with tracking down Michael and figuring out what exactly is going on with him. After this there's a few more missions where we see and hear of the tension among the other characters. What's Trevor gonna do? Where is he? Is he going to kill Michael? Is Michael going to have to track Trevor down himself possibly with the aid of Lester or Dave Norton and Steve Haynes? He is a loose end and liability as a matter of fact as far as Steve and Dave are concerned. There's a lot of tension and mystery over how Trevor is going to react and what's everyone's next move. There's no direct contact between Trevor or Michael. Their last interactions with the two of them trying to kill each other being back in North Yankton. Or if not kill each other, at least have a better understanding of where the two of them exactly were with each other. Either way, Trevor cannot plead ignorance at knowing what was to become a Michael given Mr. Chang's phone call to him on his way back to Blaine County. We have your lover. Whoa, 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 whoa. My lover? Michael DeSanta. You live in your trailer together with the maid. And then you were alone in that big house. Well, you're clearly very close. You know, how much will you give up for his safety? <laughs> My lover! Yeah, right! That's a tough break. I never want to double-cross a friend and put him in danger, but you gotta do what you gotta do. My business ain't going anywhere. I'm serious about this. He will die. Tell him. I love him dearly. Michael's aware to some level that he was captured by a mess Trevor clearly created and then intentionally left him to be captured by the Chinese. Franklin as well, knowing Trevor and Michael are aware of Michael pretty much dying or being left to die at the hands of enemies Trevor created and then he purposely left him to rot with. There's this constant uneasiness with everyone from Lester to Dave, Michael, and Steve on what Trevor's going to do or how they all plan on dealing with him. And ultimately, this is a question that's prevalent throughout the game but quickly intensifies after the mission Bury the Hatchet, a mission where Trevor learns the truth about 
brat. Trevor's absence and lack of contact with everyone only amplifies their pre-existing uneasiness towards him and their uncertainty of how important their business relationship is, but there's a lot of tension and unanswered questions, and the fact that Trevor discovered the truth about Brad, Michael, and possibly his long-term ties to Dave Norton and the feds, it's not something that can be lightly forgiven or even forgotten about. Fast forward to the wrap-up, and after this long period of radio silence, Trevor appears out of nowhere to save Michael and even Dave Norton from a shootout between the FIB and IAA. We even get this loving greeting from him. Once the shootout wraps up at a safe location, Trevor then admits to coming back to Michael for the last big score they all ever dreamed about, the Union Depository. A score that they then go on to accomplish despite the two's incessant bickering and mistrust that soon infects Franklin and even Lester. Wait, this is a good time. Let's Let's fuck, 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 fuck you, man! Hey, 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 hey! hey. God. For a couple of Midwest stick-up artists, you guys sure have become a pair of whiny West Coast douchebags! What the fuck is wrong with the West Coast? Oh, nothing. I love it here. Everyone's so numbed by the sun that if you use a three-syllable word, they think you're a professor. Man, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, you high and mighty weasel. And you don't talk down them to these fucking idiots. Hey, leave Lester alone. Oh, oh, you and Lester together? Oh, now that makes fucking sense. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. You all are assholes. Man, I gotta go calm down, homie. This shit was real illuminating. In spite of them accomplishing one of the biggest bank robberies ever to be attempted and even coming together in the middle of their fighting to help Franklin save Lamar, the two of them are still not in a very good place. And I don't think enough time has passed, especially if the player is just running through the story, to make it feel or properly seem like these two, and even Franklin to some degree, are willing to put it all on the line for each other in the end. I get it, they've been through quite the journey with their own grand and individual jobs, so it's not to say they don't have history or have some level of attachment or trust within each other. Trevor and Michael alone have a weird love-hate relationship as it's not to say that Trevor completely hates Michael. Clearly he doesn't as at Michael's fake grave they both hesitated to shoot each other. So while there is a chance for their friendship to be mended, I don't know if you even want to call it a friendship, but there's a chance for them to move on and get on some basic level of understanding with each other. I'm just expressing the swiftness of the events to follow, don't give anyone enough time time to really move on or get on a level of where they can trust each other. In order for this canonical ending of the three of them actually assassinating the Chinese triad stretch, Steve Haynes, fighting off the feds and kidnapping and killing of Devin Weston, I feel like there was something missing. Yes, the feeling of urgency and needing to work together and help each other out in order for everyone to make it out alive is apparent and known to everyone including the player. It just seems like the pacing of the events and the relationships between each character wasn't quite there in order for the finale to be as true satisfying as it could have been. Maybe with some additional story DLC, you know, the story DLC that was actually planned by Rockstar to be created to help supplement the longevity of the single player experience could have helped show how the three of them carried on after the events of the main story of Grand Theft Auto 5. Maybe there could have been some blanks that were filled in or through some in-game dialogue hearing what became of each other post-game, but unfortunately as per Rockstar themselves have said, that will never happen as time, money, and overall resources are being put to quote-unquote better use with the expansion of Grand Theft Auto Online.